the women in my family were supported for what they wanted to do? This is a great question. And I think a really important aspect here is my parents. Since we're focusing on gender inequality is that people need support systems. And Welcome or welcome back to the channel. It's me, Hasni Lakshmana, and I'm here. If you are new to the channel, this is the first step YouTube where we interview young achievers and produce inspirational content. And if you want to know who I am, just to give a short introduction about me, I'm Hasni Lakshmana, and I'm a 13-year-old uh, studying in Chennai, Vidya Ashram, in Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. I am also uh, a TED speaker and uh, a freelance writer for the school edition. And I am the founder of a non-profit organization called The First Step. So, uh, without further delay, let's welcome our guest for the day. But before that, uh, I want to introduce our supporters, CIT Chennai Institute of Technology, which happens to be the number two engineering college in Tamil Nadu, India. Now, let's moderate. So, today we have Netra Yard, who happens to be the founder of this Fun Co organization, which basically is uh, an organization where uh, they provide webinar based learning to young women in developing nations to help widen their horizons and empower them. And also, uh, they globally run this organization with 5,000 plus members over 20 different countries and that really makes me curious to have an interaction with her. So without further delay, let's welcome her and to motivate you. Uh, welcome Netra and uh, now we begin. So uh, I'm going to start off with your uh, association, Spunko. Being the mm-hmm. co-founder of it, uh, what role do you play? How does this organization function? Uh, please convey uh, you know, your point of view, why you started this organization, especially to our audience. So yeah, over to you. So Spanko is an all-girls global organization and I started it about a year and three months ago, so just over a year. And my main purpose in starting this organization was I took a course from a very prestigious university and I took it online. And so this way of learning, I think, is something that's been discovered pretty recently, but it's always been around. And so implementing this use of technology for something amazing and impacting those in undeveloped regions is probably the main reason I started. I I realized the reach and impact of technology and how we could use it for better means like education. And so Spunko holds monthly life skill webinars on various topics. We've had speakers from Microsoft, and those who started their own organizations. And the whole point of these webinars is to empower and broaden the horizons of young women across the globe, specifically in countries due to Africa and East Asia. And we've been doing this now and we've got tremendous feedback on what we're doing. So I'm very glad to see that it's making an impact. Right, amazing uh, to begin with because um, the focus is on uh, being just uh, too young to take an initiative to support for a good cause is just heads up to you and your team. So now, uh, what was the main inspiration behind you uh, to start from go along with uh, some of your friends, I assume? And there definitely should be a story, right? So I don't want you to answer that. Mm-hmm. So I actually started Spunko by myself, but a lot of the help came from my father. So I told my dad after taking at this university, I said, I wanted to start something and I wanted to do it globally and I wanted to make it technology. So I think my dad helped me a lot in establishing the organization and now I have you know, the people around the world and we work closely together to make the organization work. A main reason why I wanted to start was just that educational factor. And so I've grown up in an area where I've always had access to education and that education continues on to higher levels. And I realized that some people don't have that type of faculty. It hurts, you know, it hurts to see that you aren't 
I wanted to impact and help people. Amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, I see that especially. You see, I would want to, uh, you know, provide uh, education to uh, people who really can't afford for it, but who actually are really interested into um, getting themselves educated. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I wasn't, I mean, like, you know, according to me, I'm not really able to do something protective to mm-hmm. actually provide it, but hope that I'll do it in the future. But uh, I now yeah. I'm looking at you uh, as an inspiration to do oh. so. Right. Um, that's really wonderful. And, um, you know, another personal question uh, from me would probably be um, again, why did you particularly take the subject of educating, providing uh, awareness to girls, especially at this particular topic? Okay. So, yeah, over to you. So, growing up, I think that there's always been this stigma notion that like I don't know, that girls can't really have the same opportunities as men and I wanted to break that that gender barrier I wanted to empower these women so that they felt like they could do anything because they can it's not just that mindset that's holding them back it's also lack of opportunity and lack of mentorship and I wanted to help these girls really soar to their full potential Growing up, obviously, I I saw this notion, but in my family, it was it wasn't that strong. So the women in my family were supported for what they wanted to do, and I I didn't realize that this wasn't the case in every single household. And so I learned this at a very young age that this wasn't really the case. It is this barrier, and we need to overcome it as we progress. True, uh, I agree. See, if you closely look up in India, as I live in India, uh, the scenario back in the 90s where that like, women weren't even allowed to step out of the house, it is, uh, of course, changed. Um, you know, the years pass and people changing their own mindset, and we hope that uh, it keeps on changing. This gender equality is um, probably one of the uh, by far favorite topic of mine to debate on because. Uh, I get to learn a lot, research a lot. Uh, it's a very in-depth topic, so I really like the fact that uh, you know you sounded so beautifully while you answered this question. So I'm just closely noticing it. So um, yeah, this question is probably from the audience. If I can say, where do you see Spongo in the next five years? What uh, do you want Spongo to achieve by close of the time? Um, what are you currently doing? Like, what are your current projects which you're working on? Yeah, talk about that. So, in five years, I really hope that I'm not the core center for people to be involved in the organization and for good cause as well. So, their cause would be to help these women and impact the women in a way. And so, to kind of hand off the organization and not be there myself, as I'll probably be in college so I might not have as much time to be head of an organization. Um, another thing that I think is just would be wonderful is partnership. So there's so many organizations in the world that I know they have very similar values right now to us and uh, organization that we've recently partnered with and we've been doing a series with is Pino Women Speakers. So they are a Singaporean organization and they're the world's leading public directory of speakers. They're an absolutely amazing organization and I'm so proud to be partnering with them. We have a series called Speak Up Web Series where we have you know Women Speaker Directory and they come and speak to our audience and our chapters, our various chapters across the globe. Another thing that we're doing is we make websites for up and coming organizations and businesses. So a recent client of ours has been sold off, so we completed the whole entrepreneurial cycle this talent and sold off, as well as Red Easy. They have been established and they've just their market capital they've been entering the market i think something that's very important is just to get the word out there and to have people engage with spoko and take it to the serious organization 
play. Um, so uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to uh, ask you about, right? So how do you manage time? But before answering the questions, you have a couple of sponsors. So um, you know, obviously they're going to uh, pay or help you out, but then it comes. that comes with a lot of responsibilities right so um how do you deal with those kind of situations where you really have to push hard all of your limits and uh, probably create other impact and uh, there are people who is uh, indeed supporting you and uh, so yeah over to you because i your life that at some point of the time but i got my support so yeah on mm-hmm. so in terms of sponsors we don't have sponsors as an organization we are a non-profit but we do need some money to run and so i looked at the option of crowdfunding when and an amazing website called ifunwoman.com you just insert a bio about your cause and people donate money they see your cause is fit it was a way of crowdfunding and it is a non-profit organization so the idea of sponsors really there love to implement in the near future if possible wait amazing um again so uh, as i asked before how do you manage time between school work uh, you know you have your other uh, you know work side which i like to name passion um that obviously being uh, a 17 year old if i'm right i'm you might not right sorry uh being 16 years old you might also uh probably uh need to focus on your childhood because you just can't be a nerd sitting 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 or <laughs> uh, can't you just sitting sitting on laptop working um so yeah how do you manage time with kids So this is a great question and I think a really important aspect here is my parents that they're both people who work so they understand that like by balance there is the need to be on track of what work will should be happen and like and so they kind of do encourage me if I do get a little bit stressed about what I have to do they do encourage me to just calm down and In terms of management, I think that something really important is like actually see what you have to do. So, you know, thinking I find that amazing because I can see everything I have to do. And a tip that I've been using for quite a few years now with big tasks, seeing such a big task on a note is very overwhelming. What I like to do is put them into smaller tasks that are more achievable. and then over time with all those small tasks you come towards that big task already because you've gone through the small tasks it's seriously helpful in the the feel because you're always busy I'm constantly running around I'm really busy when it comes to work side with academics I mean that this technique helped and so I did implement it in my work life with my whole balance with fun and aspect they do encourage me to keep my health but my sister well she a great reminder I'm still a child and I'm allowed to do things you know it would be a very simple thing like play cards with her that I'm still young I can still have fun wait so this might be a new other trip for a lot of other people to follow because uh, um see I am very very bad at time management especially i tried uh, a lot of methods but clearly nothing seems to work out so this might really help me so thank you for that and this might also help a lot of other people who are out. uh right so and um other question which uh, is a personal experience of mine right so once i got uh, into the field of public speaking or being a social influencer i broke a lot of beliefs which indeed i had So uh, your organization speaks on life skills as well. So what are some of the beliefs which you broke and uh, you know you confident in that uh, I have changed. I'm not the main draw who was as well. So I think a really big since we're focusing on gender inequality is 
that people need support systems and the things that women say should be taken seriously throughout the journey i i hear people that say oh i want to start this i want to start this yeah i have this vision but my husband got support and i said that i don't really know how to help you and over the time i realized all the women that are successful have built a support system around them they did not let people around them affect their that was such an important notion be surrounded by people you know that will be happy for you that will support you in your work life and understand that there's this balance between what you're doing sometimes you will need to take a little step forward for your work and you'll have to be them for just a bit and i think it's such an important message that was often undermined it's so important to have people support you and it's such a small thing to support you but it really goes far away so no one has to go through it alone it's one of the biggest things that i can realize a uh, recent speaker said choose your own partner wisely and i think that enforced that whole notion that no one has to go through anything alone have a vision share it with people around you and if they don't support you it's really their loss incredible um i have nothing to say to this because uh, you know i'm just admiring uh, on what we have talked on right we just so to i to broke uh, some beliefs of mine which automatically gave me self esteem which automatically gave me confidence to do more so i hope that works with you as well here yeah. so um, now um, you know these are something which relates uh um, to you so what are your other hobbies what do you generally do in your free time and uh, yeah that's about it so apart from being a student i play tennis i've been playing tennis for about 9 years now i started when i was 4 i think my mom was like you know i think she sports a balance extra there's i also do piano i started at the age of 10 And I think that's more of a an expressive extracurricular that I took up, more creative, more flourishing, more artistic. And the last thing that I do with my free time is dance. So, a very important aspect to living style in general is that I don't live in India, even though I'm from India. I don't live in India, and I feel like there's this loss of culture and sense when I haven't lived there. ever and i rarely go back to india and so i picked up kathak which is a north indian classical style of dance i've been doing that for way longer than everything else i think a good 11 years now that's my main primary thing to do i've invested a lot of my time into it and again it's it's somewhere that i can express myself very easily wow you're multi talented at least not like me um So uh, yeah, uh, again, uh, one last question, uh, and then we we could wind up. So, what are your future plans? And if there is something you'd want to change in this society, what would that be? So, future plans. I think going off to college is is really big thing because as much as I love doing the organization, I do have an interest in marketing. So, I'm going to. in the marketing sector of that company go go into culture something like in the future as well as the organization expand it and have more people, have more of a core team and to encapsulate more people help everybody impact as well as sponsors and the great for brought up today as well as change change is something that i'm looking for and so one thing that i would love to leave with audiences and something that I wanted to do is the whole the whole aspect and the whole idea that education should really be for a certain person for privilege there is no such thing we need to break down these barriers like this it's for everyone and it's meant to be for everyone it shouldn't exclude people religion race nationality It's something that should be a right honestly because education is so important in today's world and surviving in the 
from based on the information that we know. And so something that I've got to change is that whole access to information. Right, so I really appreciate that initiative to begin with. So yeah, all the best uh, for you to achieve uh, your mission and uh, yeah, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. It's my pleasure and uh, yeah, I learn a lot especially from you today and I hope the people also found it interesting. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel and also click on the bell icon for further updates from the first step. Uh, comment down below uh, your favorite portion from this interview. Follow our blog, uh, our Instagram and LinkedIn. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Signing off, it's Neetra here in Hasani Lakshmi Narayanan. I'll see you next week. Thank you all.